Hello and welcome. While researching a prior video about Steve Ditko, I ran across this piece of information on Wikipedia. Quote, Created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, Gwen Stacy first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number 31. Stan Lee claimed that his wife, Joan, was the inspiration for Gwen. Unquote. Those two sentences led me down an accidental rabbit hole when I tried to confirm the validity of either sentence. I know, it's a silly piece of trivia to, well, probably everyone but me. I get that. But if Gwen Stacy was actually inspired by Joan Lee, that changed a certain portion of the Ditko video I was researching. Let me get specific. Some speculate that the lead character in the adult comic, Sweeter Gwen, was based, in part, on Gwen Stacy mainly because the names are the same and they were created around the same time. Now, Sweeter Gwen is a piece of material that Ditko never acknowledged he worked on. Admittedly, saying Ditko denied or never acknowledged the work is a bit misleading. After all, Ditko didn't do interviews and rarely spoke about his work, so his actual opinion is unknown. Any denial regarding his involvement with Sweeter Gwen comes from other anecdotal sources, not Ditko himself. Sweeter Gwen is credited to Eric Stanton, a well-known fetish artist and someone who shared a studio with Ditko between 1958 and 1968. Stanton himself stated, quote, I asked Steve Ditko to ink Sweeter Gwen for me, unquote. Even without Stanton's confirmation, a casual observer with a passing familiarity with Ditko's style would easily conclude that Ditko was heavily involved with Sweeter Gwen. The point I'm driving at here is that Ditko worked on both projects, Amazing Spider-Man number 31 and Sweeter Gwen. That's confirmed. The question that remains is, was Sweeter Gwen based on Gwen Stacy, who was also, allegedly, based on Joan Lee? Because if that's true, that gives Sweeter Gwen a bit of a distasteful edge. It would be one thing for Ditko to take a completely fictional character and possibly satirize it in a naughty comic. It would be quite another if that character was based on a real person. That would imply an indirect insult to Stan Lee, and a problematic depiction of his wife, Joan. So you can understand why I thought this trivial point needed clarification. Stan Lee's involvement with the creation of Gwen Stacy is highly questionable. According to Steve Ditko, at this point in the Spider-Man run, Lee and Ditko didn't speak to one another, not even a little. Quote, it was generally known at Marvel that Stan Lee chose not to communicate with me on anything before issue 25 of The Amazing Spider-Man. So how could Lee tell me an idea about a storyline he knew nothing about until he saw my pencil pages and my rough panel dialogue for any issue? Unquote. I don't have other sources to back that statement up, but it does conform to a few accounts that I've previously read. It was either Saul Brodsky or Roy Thomas who confirmed this information. Probably Thomas. Yes, I'm being lazy. However, I'm pretty comfortable that if someone fact-checks my fact-checking, they'll discover other accounts that confirm Lee and Ditko didn't communicate at all after a certain point. Gwen Stacy first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number 31, so that's well after the period where Lee and Ditko didn't communicate. Therefore, Lee's involvement with the creation of Gwen Stacy was either completely non-existent or minimal, depending on how much he changed Ditko's dialogue. Unless Ditko randomly decided to create Gwen and base her on Lee's wife, of which there's no evidence that Ditko did that, then it's pretty safe to declare Gwen Stacy was not inspired by Joan Lee. And, if sweeter Gwen was based on Gwen Stacy, as speculation suggests, then there wasn't any malice towards Stan or Joan, because there was no connection between Gwen Stacy and Joan. This satisfied my concern, whether Ditko made an indirect insult to either Stan or Joan. He didn't. Whether Sweeter Gwen was a naughty parody of Gwen Stacy is another matter entirely. Unfortunately, this conclusion didn't mean my investigation was over. At this point, it has to be acknowledged. The information on Wikipedia may be referring to how Gwen Stacy developed after Ditko left Spider-Man, not her actual creation. Perhaps Stan Lee changed Gwen after Ditko left the comic and he made her personality to be more like his wife. That's still a possibility. After all, Ditko only used the character four times before he quit Spider-Man and left Marvel altogether. So technically, Gwen was still in a formative stage and changes could be made. I decided to check the source of that information, as provided on Wikipedia, and I went further down the rabbit hole. 
The source on Wikipedia is an article concerning the death of Joan Lee in 2017. Rest in peace, Ms. Lee. The specific area being sourced on Wikipedia is this one paragraph. Quote, Joan, Stan told her, was the inspiration behind Gwen Stacy, the first love of Peter Parker. Stan has always said that I have a cartoon face, she said in an interview in 2002. Unquote. When I originally read that, I realized a few things. It's not in quotes, which would indicate a direct statement from Joan, like the portion concerning her face. So at best, it's a rewording of her intent or an implication Joan made at some point. That's the foundation for the claim that Gwen Stacy was based on Joan. Presumably, the quote originates from the 2002 interview that's mentioned, the video for which is sourced in the article. In fact, it's a video interview available on YouTube. Here's exactly what Joan Lee says in that interview. Well, he, geez, the first time that he saw me, he said to somebody, I've drawn that girl's face a thousand times. I'm going to marry her. You said he drew your face. Now, yes. He described uh, Gwen Stacy. You do? You know Gwen Stacy? No. Gwen Stacy is Peter Parker's first love. Oh, yes, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, he told me that, and he's, Stan has always said I have a cartoon face. I never felt that that was kind of uh, <laughs> complimentary, but he felt, you know, little nose, big eyes. That was when I was younger, of course. Big teeth, all of that. Joan doesn't directly say, at any point during that seven-minute interview, that Gwen Stacy is based on her. In fact, she doesn't even know who the character is. The interviewer has to explain it to her. You'd think, if your partner based a popular character on you and told you about it, you might immediately recall that detail. But hey, memory can be a fuzzy thing at times. And let's be honest, she probably didn't pay any attention to what happened in comic books. It would be a generous interpretation to say the video confirms that Gwen Stacy is based on Joan. By implication, the interviewer may have been heading in that direction, but he never gets there, as he has to explain to Joan who Gwen Stacy is. If one really stretches the context and presumes the interviewer was about to ask if Joan inspired Gwen because Stan claimed to have drawn her face a thousand times before they met, then one has to further presume that's what Joan also presumed and then responded to. But that's a lot of presumptions. The original article contained a clip with Stan Lee discussing his wife. I also discovered another clip from the same interview where Stan talks about Joan. Neither mentioned Gwen Stacy. So within the article, that is the source on Wikipedia, there is literally nothing to confirm the statement, Joan, Stan told her, was the inspiration behind Gwen Stacy, the first love of Peter Parker. It's a quote without attribution. So none of this confirms or resolves the statement cited on Wikipedia. Which leaves the question, where does this information come from? Naturally, I went to Google and searched high and low for some news source that had an actual quote, either from Joan saying Stan said this to her, or Stan directly saying Joan was the inspiration for Gwen Stacy. Montage Time Comic Book Resources Gwen was the first serious romantic interest introduced by Stan Lee in Amazing Spider-Man number 31, inspired by his cherished wife, Joan. No attribution, no source. Screen Rant Gwen Stacy came first, created by Stan Lee, modeled on his beloved wife, Joan. No attribution, no source. Looper Lee claimed multiple times that the design for Gwen was inspired by his wife, Joan. In a 2017 interview, Stan attempted to explain the power of his muse. Here we have a link to the original Telegraph article that is the source on Wikipedia. ABC News Stan has always said that I have a cartoon face, Joan Lee said in a 2002 interview about being the inspiration for Peter Parker's first love. The article sources the previously mentioned Joan Lee video interview where the interviewer explains who Gwen Stacy is. The Washington Post Joni was the inspiration for Mary Jane Watson, Peter Parker's first love in the Spider-Man saga. That's not even close to being accurate, and it's the Washington Post. Yikes. I could easily continue and be even more pedantic, but I think the point is clearly made. As a neat side note, every one of those articles, except the one from ABC, were written after 2020. Why is that important? because the edit to Wikipedia to include the connection between Joan and Gwen was made on September 5, 2020. So, the odds favor the high possibility the writers of those articles read Wikipedia and went no further.
Within this rabbit hole, there is one more key figure, the artist John Romita. Romita was handpicked by Stan Lee to take over Spider-Man after Ditko quit, and he remained on that title for a number of years, up to and including the death of Gwen Stacy. While Ditko set the template for the series, Romita came in and made it his own, which is a testament to the enduring, massive talent of Romita. In numerous interviews, Romita was quite forthcoming and very consistent when discussing his working relationship with Lee, especially how they went about creating stories. Quote, We would have a verbal plot session together. First it was two or three hours, then it was an hour. Stan would tell me who he would like to be the villain and personal life threats he would like carried on. Unquote. And, when asked whether Lee provided written plots, Romita said, quote, No, it was all verbal. We would talk together for about an hour. I tried to make notes and ask him to explain things that I was unclear about, but he never wrote anything down. Unquote. Like with Jack Kirby, Lee would give Romita plot beats or characters he wanted to see, and then it was up to Romita to piece it all together. And like Kirby, Romita remembered what he could from their talks, usually forgetting or misremembering details when he illustrated the story. Over time, the plot sessions varied in length, depending on Lee's schedule. Once Lee had confidence in Romita's skills, these sessions were typically a lot shorter. In other words, Romita was integral to shaping characters and the story. Romita also noted, quote, When I took over the art, Stan said, One of the good things about you taking over is that now I can bring Mary Jane into the story. And I asked Stan what he meant, and he told me that he didn't like the way Ditko was doing Mary Jane. Unquote. Which is an interesting statement, considering Ditko drew Mary Jane exactly twice, and both times she was hidden from view. They were amusing brief inserts that illustrated Peter may be missing out on something great while being a superhero. According to Romita's account, Lee was eager to have Mary Jane take an active role in the series. Possibly he wanted to introduce a Betty and Veronica love triangle situation, which Romita resisted. Now going back to the presumption that Lee changed Gwen to be based on his wife once Ditko departed, Romita would have certainly gotten that direction from Lee, but that doesn't seem to have happened. In fact, Romita stated, quote, When I did Gwen, I did her as icy and cold and aloof as Ditko did. Unquote. While Romita did update Gwen's look to the more iconic style everyone knows, she did remain mostly the character that Ditko created. Sure, she partied and wore flattering clothes, but Romita made sure there were character differences between Gwen and the fun-loving Mary Jane. Gwen wasn't a moody grump, but she was a counterpoint to Mary Jane's bubbly, outgoing personality. Aesthetic changes aside, Romita did not indicate there were specific instructions from Stan to alter Gwen to be more like Joan. Romita did, in fact, preserve the template that Ditko created. So, we're still nowhere. Along with a generous interpretation of what Joan said in a 2002 interview, there may be one more contributing factor. The writer and editor, Jerry Conway, made an observation within the book Marvel Comics The Untold Story, written by Sean Howe in 2012. Notably, Conway is the writer of The Night Gwen Stacy Died, a story that is infamous for killing off Gwen Stacy, if that wasn't obvious from the title. In that book, Conway states, quote, Only a damaged person would end up with a damaged guy like Peter Parker, and Gwen Stacy was perfect. It was basically Stan fulfilling Stan's own fantasy. Joan Lee was an attractive blonde, who was obviously Stan's ideal female, and I think Gwen was simply Stan replicating his wife, just like Sue Storm was a replication of his wife." Unquote. Conway's statement is, let's say, missing a few important details. Joan was a brunette when she met Stan, and in all the pictures I could locate from that era, she remained a brunette for a number of years. When she became a blonde is unclear. Regardless, that's a pretty superficial detail. Furthermore, Romita had a heavy hand in the series, including its direction and character management. I'm going to conveniently overlook the Sue Storm comment so I can stay on point. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So there's someone on record stating Gwen was based on Joan, and it's someone familiar with Gwen Stacy. But Conway is expressing what he thinks, rather than stating it was knowledge he acquired from Stan. So it's not exactly confirmation, it's his opinion, nothing more. However, it is something worth mentioning, 
because if one does a Google search and narrows their results to the years before 2012, the year Conway's statement saw print, there are literally no results for Joan Lee inspiring Gwen Stacy. Between 2012 and 2016, the year before Joan passed, the only results that mention a connection between Gwen and Joan are news items quoting Jerry Conway from the Sean Howe book. After 2017, the year Joan Lee passed away, this connection becomes prevalent and mentioned in practically every article posted about Joan. Additionally, the connection appears in a number of articles detailing Gwen Stacy's past or origin. Were these two points, Joan's interview and Conway's opinion, conflated to become an often repeated fact? I don't know, but the evidence is somewhat compelling. The statement that Joan Lee is the inspiration for Gwen Stacy comfortably sits within the realm of highly questionable information. It's something no one seems to have investigated and confirmed. Without an actual source, it's just something someone wrote and everyone ran with it because it sounds true. The problem is, there doesn't seem to be anything in the public record that confirms this. Or if there is, it's buried so deep that a reasonably thorough search will produce no results. Believe me, I did a lot more searching and reading than that little montage earlier. Obviously, I didn't read or watch every Stanley interview in existence. So somewhere out there, in some distant, obscure article or video, Stan or Joan may very well have said this. Or I missed something in my volumes of reading or watching. Which is why I say it's highly questionable, not an outright obvious fabrication. With all that's been evaluated, let's try to answer the question. Was Joan Lee the inspiration for Gwen Stacy, Peter Parker's first love? If you're talking about her creation, then no. Not unless Steve Ditko had to think for Stan's wife, and it was a whole Patty Boyd, George Harrison, and Eric Clapton type of scenario. But there's no evidence to suggest Ditko even met Joan, let alone developed a profound crush on her. What about after Ditko left? Well, Gwen did loosen up a bit, and her style changed. But the artist, John Romita, didn't specify any directions from Lee to alter Gwen. In fact, Romita continued to portray Gwen as the character Ditko had created. So again, the answer is no. There's no evidence that Gwen was changed to be like Joan. This may not be the answer you like, but it's the one you have. Let's end this. Roll credits. Thank you for watching or listening, whatever the case may be. Additional thanks to all my fine supporters on YouTube and Patreon. Please support this channel by subscribing or giving this video a like and leaving a comment. Extra special thanks to John Nyux, Andrew Barton, Odin Ashcroft, Phil Sagan, Edward Clayton Andrews, Corey Drew, L.S. Gregor, Alexa Zernish, Brian Deaton, Johnny Lim, Steve White, and Matt Marino. You are all justified and ancient.